So I want to welcome everyone to what is sure to be a fun evening as we ring in a new year that has particular significance for Deerfield, and I'm honored to be here tonight to guide the evening's events. And I'm going to step up here periodically to make announcements as I've already done. I've spent the first 22 years of my life in Deerfield, and though I've lived in New York for the bulk of the rest of those years, Deerfield has always been home for me. I graduated from high school in 1975, and I recall one day at the end of that school year being in the center of South Deerfield and the then superintendent of the high school, Alfred Lottie, stopped me on the street and we chatted for a bit. And and then as we parted, he said to me, don't ever forget where you came from. And I never forgot his words. I always remembered Alfred Lottie's words. And I returned as often as I could, even though today most of the members of my family have passed on. I do have some family and friends here. And I love this town. I love Deerfield for its rich history, for its educational institutions, the outstanding private schools, Deerfield Academy, Eagle Brook, and Bement, and the fine public schools, Deerfield Elementary and Frontier Regional High School. And I love Deerfield for its beauty, the fields and the farms, the apple orchard, the monuments that are scattered all over town, the museums of historic Deerfield, all the reasons that you love Deerfield too. And I can't think of a place I'd rather be tonight than here with all of you. So thank you for allowing me to guide the events tonight. And at some point during the evening, if you haven't done it already, I want you to step into the main lobby and see the items that are on display. I know that you passed through here on your way in and you checked in, but if you didn't look at the displays, go check them out. They include the winners of the competition for Deerfield cancellation stamps, one for South Deerfield and one for the old Deerfield post offices. The winner of South Deerfield cancellation stamp is 10-year-old Ainsley Sothergill, and the winner of the old Deerfield stamp is 11-year-old Brooke Sherest. It's fabulous work by these two elementary school students, and congratulations to both of them. Also in the lobby are posters of images and maps of Deerfield through the years, and then there's the time capsule. You can check it out, and you should check it out now because it's going to be buried at some point in 2023 for the next 50 years. A big thanks to Bob Decker, for facilitating the manufacture and design of the time capsule by the students from Franklin County Technical High School. At each table, you have mementos that are yours to keep. There's a Deerfield 350th pint glass, that's yours. The Deerfield can of beer by Berkshire Brewing Company is yours. And a champagne truffle donated by Richardson Candy Kitchen. And finally, someone at each table gets to take home the beautiful centerpieces by LaSalle Flores. How about a round of applause for the board of directors and volunteers of Friends of Deerfield who put this event together, working so hard to organize so many moving parts and raise money for tonight's Jubilee and for events to come in 2023 as Deerfield celebrates its 350th otherwise known as a sesquicentennial. So, the big round of applause is for President Jennifer Remillard, James Cambias, Chris Harris, Stan Adams, and all the volunteers. And now, our first speaker is Jennifer Remillard, President of Friends of Deerfield. Hello, welcome everyone. Some of you may know me not only as the president of Friends of Deerfield, but I'm also the director at the South County Senior Center. Um, <laughs> I have to say, it's one of the best jobs I've ever had, and I love every minute of it. Thank you for the introduction, Beth, and for the well wishes for the Friends of Deerfield. It has been an honor to work with our team and our board, and I am so grateful to be a part of this. The Friends of Deerfield, Beth, thanks you so much for emceeing tonight's event. I know you probably could have had a lot of other options to celebrate. So, as Beth shared, my name is Jennifer Remillard. I'm the president of Friends of Deerfield. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us and kicking off Deerfield's 350th celebration. 
I'd like to thank our event sponsors who are listed on the back page of our program this evening. And if also if you were out in the lobby, you got to see them on the list. I'd also like to thank Deerfield Academy for utilizing this facility tonight. Hillside Catering, Organic Catering is creating a fantastic meal for us to enjoy tonight. We also have a fabulous cake, if you have not seen it, created by Bittersweet Bakery in town. LaSalle's Florist for creating gorgeous centerpieces that are in front of you this evening at each of your tables. Richardson's Candy Kitchen for donating the champagne chocolate truffles at each place setting. The O-Tones who are setting up behind me for their fabulous music they'll be playing tonight. They're a fantastic band if you have not heard them. And Hillside Tents for our linens, china, flatware, and glassware. I'd personally like to give a round of applause and a special thanks to Stan Adams, our clerk, for the phenomenal job he has done in spearheading tonight's events. Stan, thank you so much. Without Stan, I don't think I would have been kept on track. And that's not a bad thing, because there is so much that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see. So Stan, thank you. As I stand here tonight, I wonder if my ancestors, who lived in Deerfield during multiple frontier settlements, would ever envision our town 350 years later. I think they would be proud. When I learned of the planning for the 350th celebration, I volunteered. Seeing this as an opportunity to continue forward as part of our town's future building on my ancestors' legacies. You see, I descend from multiple founding families of this community, the Steblins, the Catlins, the Course families. My eighth great-grandfather, John Stebbins II, was one of only two men who survived the Bloody Brook attack. Had he been killed, I would not be here before you tonight. His daughter, my seventh great-grandmother, Thankful Stebbins, and my paternal ninth great-grandmother, Elizabeth Course, were both captured as young girls and brought to Nouveau France during the Deerfield Raid of 1704. They chose never to return to live in Deerfield. In 2014, some 310 years later, I chose to call Deerfield my home. Our community has a complex history, and I'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge it. It begins with our indigenous communities who were here when my ancestors arrived and long before, the Pakumtuk and the Nipmuc. Other indigenous communities traveled through these lands as well. Our history also includes enslaved people. Did you know the first African poet, Lucy Terry Prince, lived in Deerfield, was an enslaved member of the Wells family? She wrote the famous poem, The Bars Fight. If you'd like to learn more about other enslaved individuals who lived in Deerfield, I'd like to invite you to learn more through Historic Deerfield's Witness Stones Project if you have not already checked it out. It's a really interesting process. Historic Deerfield has a lot of information on their website as well. We are a community of farmers, families from Eastern Europe, the Caribbean, and many other areas of the world. Each member of our community brings a unique perspective. When we founded the Friends of Deerfield in 2020, we wanted to focus on bringing our community together. Our first goal was to fundraise for the Deerfield 350 at Celebration. Our mission is to encourage, finance, and support historical and cultural events, to edu engage, educate, and to entertain the people of Deerfield while fostering community and civic pride. During the 300th celebration year, the people of Deerfield, the Odenok and Abnaki people came together to facilitate friendship and peace amongst our communities. It had been these groups in conflict before and after the 1704 Deerfield Raid. Monuments to this friendship and peace can be found within our community it became a goal to build upon going into our 350th year. Tonight, we continue in spirit of building communities. We also continue to build in the spirit of our mission by educating our friends and neighbors. 
We will hear from our special speaker, Liz Coldwin Santana Kaiser, an elder of the Nipmuc people, who will share with you the journey of our indigenous friends of the Nipmuc and how they have never left our community. We appreciate you being in attendance with us this evening, and we look forward to celebrating Deerfield's 350th celebration year with you throughout 2023. I hope you enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And now let's hear from Trevor McDaniel, Chair of the Deerfield Select Board. Welcome, everybody. So I want to welcome everyone here this evening on our first event to both ring in the new year of 2023 and to kick off our full year of events to celebrate the 350th anniversary of the founding of the town of Deerfield. My name is Trevor McDaniel. I'm the chair of the select board for the town of Deerfield. Um, like many small towns, serving on the select board comes with many other jobs. I serve on the Board of Health as a sewer commissioner and serve on the Board of Oversight for the South County Senior Center. Uh, before these roles, I served a few years on the Deerfield Elementary School Committee. I'm here tonight with my wife, uh, Sarah McDaniel. We have a son, Caleb, who's a junior here at Deerfield Academy. Um, I serve on the select board with Carolyn Sh uh, Shores Ness and Tim Hilchey. Um, without their help, um, I, just, I just could not do, do all the work that we do together. I'm so grateful for them. And I, I also work alongside so many extremely talented staff who, without their help and, and dedication to our town, uh, we may not have made it 350 years. Um, I, I was asked tonight to say a few words about Deerfield and what this milestone means. Um, like everything I procrastinated, um, how, uh, how do you sum up what a town is and what it means to have a town last 350 years? I researched the web, I watched countless YouTube videos, I went into the vault at the town hall, and then I descended into the basement of the 1888 building, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to the old uh, vault that houses a lot of old files for the town. There are tax res records and inventories of who owned how many uh, chickens or head of cattle. Uh, there are old railroad and sewer layout plans, among other things. Uh, early in the year, I visited the uh, Pocumtuck Valley Memorial Hall Museum and was amazed at all the artifacts and history on display. And then there's the Flint Center uh, and Museum of Historic Deerfield. I can't think of many other towns that have so many resources cataloging our history. That history is complicated, and I feel we are beginning to have enough distance to honestly reflect on that history. Um, we have many others in attendance that can speak more to our history and are more qualified to share those lessons with you and, and where we go into the future. I think in the end, uh, I feel that a town is its people and what, what they do for the common good. This town has been blessed with so many dedicated people uh, from our founding through today uh, that work tirelessly to ensure the well-being of our town. I became involved civically in the town uh, a few years after my son was born. It was our town's collective dedication to education, educating our children that drove me to get involved. It was through my years on the school committee and then running for a seat on the select board that really opened my eyes to the people that make up the fabric of our town. And many of us take a small thread of, of that fabric and weave our print into Deerfield. We serve on um, a board ensuring the resources uh, are sufficient for the education of our children, like uh, Ken Cuddeback, who's done that for more than 30 years or more. Um, we may serve, on a, on, uh, serve our children by ensuring they cross the road safely for more than 40 years, like Sharon Pachurik has, along with uh, the hours and hours of time working with our seniors to make sure they have what they need uh, through the South County Triad. We serve as a recreation director or coach in helping to bring Santa to the children each year, like Sue Ann Tanellis and her husband, Tom. Uh, some of us work on too many things, like, uh, like my mentor, Carolyn Shores Ness, who has truly put Deerfield first in so many ways. Uh, first in the state uh, in joining the Municipal uh, Vulnerability uh, Program uh, to drive millions of grant money into Deerfield. 
first uh, in the state to create a green infrastructure policy, first in the state to declare a state of emergency when COVID-19 hit. Many of our first over the years to put Deerfield ahead of the curve on important policies that help Deerfield be strong and vibrant. In my short time, I've seen so many people give it their time and make Deerfield a vibrant community that it is. I think of Bob Decker and his never-ending bits of history and knowledge that he passes down to many of us. At the time, you don't always understand what he's passing on this information about, but over the years, it comes into focus, and you're glad you've, uh, you've got that bit of information. And there are so many residents that have advocated and sacrificed their time to make Deerfield a more welcoming, safer, vibrant place to live. I also need to mention the staff that run Deerfield daily. This is no small feat. I could not be prouder to represent a more caring and selfless staff and these folks that uh, truly make the town function. This task has only gotten harder and harder over the years. I'm not sure how much work it was 350 years ago, but I must imagine they had no idea what it would become. Uh, from, from Chief Pachurik, who, who without his guidance and dedication to the Deerfield safety and his infectious can-do attitude, run a well-functioning police department and sets Deerfield as a leader in the region and state uh, for community policing. Kevin Scarborough and his DPW staff constantly putting their safety before ours to ensure our roads are safe and trees are cleared from the never-ending storms coming with climate change. Uh, Casey Warren and our town administrator and all her staff who are on the front lines every day working hard to figure out new laws and regulations and trying to solve our residents' issues in a timely manner. There are truly too many people to name and it's these people that make our town. We are, uh, we are all working hard together to bring our town into the future. There are uh, new, co uh, new committees meeting monthly to ensure we are all rowing in the same direction. We have an amazing planning board looking, for, uh, looking at ways to grow smartly to ensure um, that we are a place for responsible business to blend into our fabric and that we want partners uh, want to be partners with our town. Uh, our truly world-class educational facilities like Deerfield Academy, the Bement School, Eaglebrook, and our amazing public schools like Frontier and Deerfield Elementary are focused on bringing an education of equity, inclusion, and diversity to our children and young people from all over the world so that they are prepared to meet the challenges of the next centuries. It is a really exciting time to be in Deerfield. We are working hard to bring our facilities up to code and ensure that we have quality infrastructure for the next generation. Yes, it's slow, it's painful and costly, but I think back at the vision of our past residents and leaders and feel strongly that investing in our future and our children is the best way to be resilient to the challenges of the next generation we'll face. There are so many of you that in your own way are doing your part for Deerfield and our community and I cannot possibly name you all, but you all know who you are and you are, and you are setting a lasting example of what civic engagement looks like for our next generation of leaders. Uh, for that, I thank you and I would not want to be anywhere else than with you as we ring in the new year and the future of Deerfield. Thank you all for coming tonight. Please attend all the fun events planned for the 350th year of Deerfield. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you, Trevor. Our final speaker is Liz Santana Kaiser. Jennifer mentioned her. Among her many roles, she is the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer for the Chabanagangamog. I just learned how to pronounce that. Chabanagangamog band of Nipmuc Indians. So I want to welcome Liz to the stage. Good evening, everyone. My name is Liz Coldwin Santana Kaiser. I am a Nipmuc Indian. I am with the Chabanagagamog Band. Today, I would like to start by saying it gives me great pleasure to know that the lands we walk on today was once walked on many years ago by our ancestors. They are the ones who have created the roots, the trails, and the pathways throughout this area and many of these trails can still be found today. So as we gather here today, 
we recognize our presence on the homeland of the Pawtucket people and the Nipmuc people. We honor this land and all of its people who were here at the time, before, and the coming of the Europeans. We recognize that we are temporarily on this land and we must be mindful of our impact. And like our ancestors, we are the stewards of this land. We have a responsibility to prevent further harm to the land and its people. So with this, I would like to tell you a little bit about some of my family members. And I'm gonna talk about the past. 1865, my great-great-uncle Payne Henrys. Payne Henrys lived in the woods by a pond. He was born in 1865, and he lived very traditional, the way of the Nipmuc life. He wore leather and feathers, and he never cut his hair. The leather and feathers that he wore is what we call today a regalia, but back in them days we wore, that's the way we dressed. He had an old wooden shack that he lived in, and it had very little furniture. Unlike the Nipmuc Weetus that we lived in, that were for families. My Uncle Payne later in his life lived alone. And he lived alone on Whiting's Pond in Rhode Island. He would spend most of his day at the Whiting Pond fishing and hunting. My Uncle Payne lived entirely off the money he would earn selling his fish and his game to the local townspeople. He followed no hunting laws, for he didn't know any hunting laws. He hunted as our ancestors did. Payne Henrys died in 1936, and in his obituary, he was the last of the Nipmuc Indians. So many times in the media, it was always the last of the Nipmuc Indians. And I have many articles of relatives who had passed that were supposedly the last. But that can't be because I'm here talking with you today. And my point to you today is that if you look around, you'll see that we are still here. Our identity, our culture, our traditions are still alive and thriving. We still conduct our serial ceremonial festives. Our youth still go through naming ceremonies and the rites of passage. Our language is still spoken and being taught to the next generations of our speakers. Our kids learn traditional, dancing, regalia making, playing the drum. And lastly, we have powwows. And powwows is a very strong way of bringing our people together to bond and for healing. My grandchildren and my children still gather in some of the same places that our ancestors did. My son, who sits on the council, is a fisherman and a hunter man. And what we do is that on times in the winter, when we do our huntings, we have our deer. We catch the deer, we tan the hide, we keep the meat, and we shear. So when we do catch, we shear with the other members of the tribe and as well as our neighbors. We also still do, and this is coming from the past that we still do today, we make machines. A machine is something like a canoe, but we call it a machine, and it is made from a whole tree. And there's a ceremony that goes to making this machine. It takes weeks, and it takes a week of burning, which is never to be stopped, and so it's kept. We also still tap trees. We make our own syrup. We bring our youth so that they can learn the different trees and how to tap. It's something that we still do today that we did in the past. We still eat traditional foods. Our three sisters, beans, squash, 
I'm sorry, it's beans, corns, and squash that we call the three sisters, and we still use today, and we still cook today. So you can see we are still here, and we have just begun. We have always been here, and we will always be here. I would like to end this by saying that I appreciate the fact that you recognize that the indigenous people are still here, that we are thriving people. I would love for all you people to come to our powwows so you can see the bonding and the healing. And we invite everyone to take part. I want to say thank you for having me here tonight. Akwini, peace. Thank you, Liz.